love to love the baby. Ah. Don't just sneak up on me. Look. Yeah, that's not a good way to start. This is a very dangerous episode. I've got my remember kids, electricity will kill you. So, couple things. The Elvis flip, you don't you use a blow dryer, but you don't do it while you're still in the bathtub. And I don't care if your friend Benjamin Franklin has a new kite or not. You're not going and get that damn crane away from those power lines. Yeah, this one's going to be special. This is episode 10 of Punk and the Never Ending Saga of Punk. And now we know the back is still off of Punkin. And I am going to wire up a guitar with, that's right, volume and tone. These are cupcake. Yeah, this is a harmony stuff. Looks original. Yeah, looks original, kind of like this looks original, but it's not. This is right here. Anyway, have you ever wired up a guitar with a pickup, a tone, and a volume control, and an input jack, and all of that? You haven't? Well, we've got something in common then. Because we're going to do that today. No, I've done it before. You have no way of confirming that unless you watch all of my episodes and give me a like. And that will get me about another 37 cents. I appreciate that. What is good about this in all seriousness is we have the back off the guitar. So there is no dental floss and pulling stuff through F holes and all that kind of thing. We are going to be able to look down on... All the different connections and I'm going to take my time and I'm going to show you step by step lug by lug how to wire up a guitar this is already painfully long so I'm going to shorten it up by getting to the bench right now okay guys I should really move the camera and do the narrative but I'm going to tell you uh, the story from here you notice that we were talking about making this a classroom guitar because, guys, I have 20 guitars that are this bad sitting around. But you'll notice that we, I, put holes in for the electronics, a tone and volume control right here. Well, if you turn this up, this is the bass side of the strings. Remember, that's what caused this to collapse right here, heavy bass strings. Uh, that I put the tone controls up here so lefty could play it. Well, guess what? This is going to be a right-handed playing guitar now, which means I need to move these over into here with this area that says the number of the guitar, H1213, right there. But I'm, gonna, I'm just going to mark these off, and we're going to put two holes here. So what do we do with this? Well, here's what I do. I have some metal tins like this, okay? And if you open them up, there is wood inside of them. It's really important that I get this open. Like this one. Let's check out how good pumpkin is supported. Like this one, for example. Like this. Okay? So... I am going to cut a wafer of this and then I'm going to trace it and put it under here like a coin and make a circle around it. And I could also use a dowel depending on the wood I have. But when someone went out to get this wood for me, um, guess what? They didn't have any dowels that were pre-cut and laying where... Look what that says. That says Sun House Paramount. This wood came from the grounds where the Wisconsin Chair Company was in Grafton, Wisconsin. So 
We all know the story of Sunhouse and Reuben Lacey. Well, Sunhouse was a preacher, was telling everybody Reuben Lacey, Lacey's music was the devil's music, basically cussed Reuben Lacey out of town and then took up the music himself. So if I'm going to put a piece of wood in one of these holes that represents Sun House, then I'm probably going to put in something that represents Reuben Lacey. When we get in here, this wood that's in here has actually been on the grounds of the church that Reuben Lacey built and preached in until his death. I have a rubbing of the cornerstone uh, when they dedicated the church or started to build it in 1964. But there's going to be relic wood in here. And again, I can either take a plug cutter and cut a, a plug, or I can cut a wafer like so, and then take a pencil through here and make a number of these, sand them down, get them level. And then of course, I wanna make sure that the wood is differentiated from the rest of the top. That's what you're gonna see. Once I'm done with that and got them drilled, I'm just gonna go ahead and wire this up. Now, while I've got this open, I have to run a ground from uh, the tailpiece that's gonna come up and I'll ground the strings through the tailpiece. I have all of these parts and things that I need over in here. And then I am going to put the input jack off over on the side, but it needs to re be reinforced. And I think that when I took the piece of metal and cut the pumpkin out of it, pumpkin's friend, the cat, will be a good reinforcement piece for that. So I'll get these plugged, I'll get the electronics put in and run all this. I'll give you a quick brief on that. Once that's all done, then and only then can I make sure, because look here, this thing still moves around even with this. These here move quite a bit. I will get everything stabilized, then we'll put the back on. There's no way we're gonna glue the back in one shot. Remember, we had to replace some kerfing. This guitar has been sitting in this condition for almost two months. So there's gonna be some fine tuning to do when it comes to sanding and putting this back together, but we are getting it close. Did I tell you that somebody has sponsored this guitar that's very significant? It's gonna to go to them shortly now. There we go. Little piece of Reuben Lacey wood. I think we'll put him first up there. Let's get a piece of Sun House. Notice this is thick enough to do several. So I'll take them on a bandsaw without cutting my fingers off and get a few slices. And then I will make sure that they're color coded with a dot of something or other that will be on the downside of them and put them back in their respective tins. Okay, guys, there's our little plug. I can just simply take a file now and knock down any edges I need. You think this is a big enough one? No, I'm not a bastard. The file is, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is pumpkins, like very delicate. Okay. And then we just come in from the bottom, like so, and push up into there. And then we'll just tap it in and pop some glue on there. Yeah, I'm not gonna use hide glue this time. I will use tight bond. T tight bond finally gets the call. All right, you can kind of see what's been going on over here. Um, we've got the most important thing, bacon flavored toothpicks, and we are gonna use tight bond this time. We've got this fancy setup going on here. We already put in Reuben Lacey's piece. Son's just gonna have to wait because that's what he did to be able to get to play slide guitar. By the way, there's never any evidence that says that Reuben Lacey played guitar. Um, I think that you should probably check out what kind of influence that Reuben Lacey had on country and western music through 
his job on the railroad was somebody that was kind of important there. We'll get into that another time. But see, this is a piece of binding tape, and we come in from underneath here. And then that'll make it flush, like so. And then we will just get some glue down in there on that seam right there. And we'll let this dry. There's gonna be more mojo on in this guitar than there is in the average cemetery the night of Halloween, whatever that meant. I just feel like talking crap now because I had to be far too serious in that last bit about whatever I forget. Waiting for glue to dry. Okay, how are we doing here? Um, I want you to see that we're gonna, we're gonna repeat over here because there's been a change of plans. And so the holes that were where are you, Chick Flick Teal Pointer? Right there. Can you see those? Need to be over here. But the problem I have is there's an H1213 mark there, which is also on the bottom. So if anybody takes this off again, we're going to just put this over here H1213. Okay, and I'll sign my name. It'll be 2024. There we go. That takes care of that. Now, I'm going to put this measuring device in here. And we're going to be right about there. And we'll just eyeball that one right about there. Yeah, this is Chick Flick Teal. The nepotism around here runs rampant chick flick teal chalk, chick flick teal pointer. I guess we're going to have the whole family living off me before I know it. Now, I had this idea that I was going to hang up everything as I used it, and it's just burning up valuable time. So I'm going to come in here. We're going to drill through here nice and slow. Right there. Now, notice that I drilled a small hole even though the potentiometers are much bigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over now and we're going to use a step bit and a countersink to finish these holes off. Let me flip this around. Okay, step bits and countersinks are really handy tools because we're just going to touch this like so and get any of those burrs out of the way and then we're going to flip this over and do the same thing over here notice i have that bean bag underneath there how are we doing there we go we can see it so i'm just going to get rid of those burrs like this bingo I'll tell you what I like these tooth washers uh, because they stop things from spinning once things are in here now I want you to notice that some potentiometers have a little lug that sticks up so you drill a little hole and then you put it in if that's going to be the application here you push that lug down but anyway you just put that there and it will stop everything from spinning now there are two um, potentiometers that we're going to use on this one for the volume and one for the tone and I want to make sure that I set up everything the right way this guitar makes an awesome soldering stand as soon as I put some knots on the bottom side of this to keep everything in place you're going to find out that I will show you in its entirety how to wire this up so we're going to take the tone pot here we're going to stick it through the hole. Remember, we have that tooth washer there. And we are just going to put a washer 
and a knot on this to keep it stable while we're soldering. We have some things called helping hands and the like, but we're just going to snug this up. Alrighty, they are both on there enough and snug enough where I can still move them around if I need to. But we have volume and tone. And you know what? I think I will step away just for a second. And we will do this for you. V. T. How's that? Oh, by the way, these are 500K pots. They each have three lugs. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, when we wire these, we don't want a bunch of stuff hanging all over the place, but at the same time, if we ever have to take them out, that is, uh, we need to have them where they're not so tight that they're, they have to come out one piece. You want a little bit of slack here, but here's the way this works. This lug, the first lug right here, goes to ground on the, the uh, volume pot. The center one goes to the input jack, and this one goes to your pickup. So there's also on the tone pot, there is a capacitor, a resistor, whatever you want to call it. It's one of these little red things right there. You see that in there? That goes to ground and to one of the lugs. And also the pickup or the input jack feeds from here also to the tone pot. So let's get the soldering iron warmed up and get to work here. Okay, I am going to use this pickup. It's got a cover. The wire comes out of the bottom and not the top. So I want this to be down up on top. And if you look at that, it fits right in between the tone bars, but it's gonna mount on top. It basically just rides. Let's flip this over for a second. The top of the arch top, and there's gonna be enough give in the cover that I'm gonna set it right here, like so. Just like that. Now, I have the center of this marked and I have the center of the fingerboard marked, so that's gonna work out good for me. So, what I'm gonna to need to do here is I'm gonna use my Chick Flick ch Teal chalk and mark that and I am going to need to drill a little hole this countersink while I got it in the bit and start off and make that little starter hole there and then I'm going to take my step bit and put a little hole right there Now, I just missed the tone bar, which is what I, I meant to do that. Anyway, so this, notice that I put this on the same side as my potentiometers. Now, I can just pop this in here there's a ground wire and a hot wire like so I'm gonna feed that down notice I left these strings on here because when it comes time to put the back on yeah I got some tricks to do because I showed you before that everything flexes but okay so this is the cover very simple and believe it or not, the spacing on this fits 
So this will be screwing into the tone bars. Now, that being said, you want to make sure that when you're doing that, you pre-drill those holes because if not, you will split the tone bars and you will be back to square one. So we'll tape that down like so. And we'll keep everything like so. And then we'll flip this over again and figure out how our wires are doing on the inside. See, we just missed that tone bar there. So, we're gonna come over here. There's two wires here. There's one that is loose that we wound up. That's the ground wire. And this white one here is the hot wire. Now, that hot wire is gonna go to the volume pod that kind of looks like an L when I turn it. Let me make sure that you see that. This is going to go into that right there. I can bend that down a little bit and do that to it. Now, this ground is going to have to go to the back of the potentiometer like this. There's a couple of things that are going to need to do that, like the input jack, which is going to be mounted over here. And I'll show you that in a different camera angle. I think we need to spin this around. Yeah, it's going to come through the body right here. We're going to put a pin and jack here. But now what we need to do is we need to put a wire that goes from the tailpiece, the trapeze tailpiece, and through here that comes in and grounds to the potentiometer. There we go. Let's get this in the right spot. You know what? I did a lesson learned the hard way episode on grounding. So right up there, right about now, is a link to that. And you'll see Reverend Peyton in there as well. So... Let's take a look at what we've got going on here. I am going to put uh, uh, a different strap button here. So we'll take these out. I never, ever trust that. But we mounted the, the tailpiece so we could line things up in a previous episode. But I'm going to take this off of here now. Uh, watch out for that finish. Yeah, so we have, did we drill those? No, it might be a good idea if we go ahead and drill those out now. Just a second. There. Much better. One more time. Watch that finish. Okay, so there's one, two, three holes now. I'm going to need one more hole, and it's got to go all the way through the tail block. And I have this big bit here, this big one way and big another. And I'm going to just drill right in the middle of this, or thereabouts, like so. Now, what did I do that for? Well, there's got to be a wire that touches the tailpiece here, like so. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't you know? Because the strings have to be grounded or everything's going to buzz. So this will go here, like so. And when I screw all of this down, the tailpiece being in contact with the string or the wire is going to ground the tailpiece which grinds the, 
grounds the strings. Rented lifts. Okay, I have a roll of wire here. It's called pushback wire. And what it does is it has a fabric coating like they did in the old days and pre-tinned wire so it solders very easily and you just do that with it you see that now since the back of the guitar is off I can simply fish this in here through that hole that I just did from the inside well, this is very easy where are we at there it is look at that check that out okay now what I want to do is I want to pull this back a little bit and I'm going to take something that's rounded like a bit or, a, or something like this and I want to loop this like so you see that now if you're working on an old guitar and you take the tailpiece off and you don't know this, you will literally pull the grounding wire through. You see what I just did? I made that loop. It's going to go down here. And when I screw this on like so into that hole, it's going to be in contact and my strings will be grounded. There we go. I guarantee you my strings will be grounded as long as I hook up the other end right. Okay, there we go. We have the wire coming in and it is going to end up grounding to over here on the top of the potentiometer so I will cut that off there and get rid of that there there we go now it's time to think about where we are going to put the input jack and I am actually going to use Something is going to match the color theme. Maybe I'll show you uh, this one. I like these. These are actually pin end jacks. You can use a strap on these, which I don't. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce. I'm going to bring this in from the side. I've always uh, noticed that some people like to clip, plug in their guitar on the side on the bottom here. So what this does, it comes in from the side like so, but in order to keep the color theme going on, I'm going to use this black one here. It'll match tuners and everything else. Now you remember Punkin had a friend on the sign that I cut Punkin out of, and it's this cat. So we're actually going to reinforce where the, the uh, input jack comes from the inside because while I'm here, let me show you something. I actually took a guitar body and busted it up today. Look how thin and weird these sides are. They're like paper thin. I might be able to use that piece of kerfing again. Like so. Yeah, check that out. But these things are paper thin. So when you start putting stuff over here on something like this, it's going to want to bust up. Okay, I have taken a small bit and drilled very small holes here. And I have taken these to the belt sander and ground them down so there's no parting lines or chafe there. But there's small holes that I am going to drill in with chick flick teal screws and mount them. The guitar and I want to make sure that the cat because the guitar is upside down that the cat is in the right spot notice that I drilled holes this is fairly long and I'm going to put the sound input uh, the jack right in the middle of the cat's body which makes it want to do that weird face you'd be doing that too if I ran an input jack through the middle of your stomach now wouldn't you 
All right, you can't see it over here, but it turned out real pretty, especially with them chick flick deal screws. Anyway, the input jack goes through here. Now I'm going to put the appropriate ground wires and hot wire on this and twist these into a loom because they need to come over to here. Hey, check this out, coveters. I better not cuss you till I get this closed, but I have spent a ton of time with Tammy cutting shrink wrap. I am a firm believer in shrink wrap and having different colors of shrink wrap that match whatever it is I am doing. So when I go, yeah, do never, never, do never, never leave that open. But when you're using your pushback wire, you just simply put one of these here because wherever we're going to make a connection, I'm going to put a kink right there like that. And then when I solder the hot wire, which by the way goes on to the short lug of this, I might as well put this here right now, like so. And then I put my ground wire on the pushback wire like this and kink that there and kink this here. But you'll see that there's not too much space between where these two t wires are going to touch. They could possibly touch. And I always you shrink wrap once I make those soldered connections. You see that? There. It helps if they're within the frame of the camera, correct? Okay, I want to show you something here. My soldering stand has a sponge in it that's wet. That's how you clean off your tip between every connection you make. Okay, here we go. Notice that the shrink wrap is way back here. This clamp and this yardstick come in real handy. And we're heating the element, not, we're not, if you've ever soldered before, yeah, you're not heating the solder on the tip. You're tinning the tip by doing this a little bit and then dipping it, but you are basically just heating up whatever you're doing and putting the solder like that. If it's shiny, it's good. If it's not shiny, it's not good. Now, we are going to take our crack torch. It's not really that. And we're going to put our shrink wrap over the top of this, if we can ever get that clip out of the way, and push that on there and heat it up. Oh, look at that, bingo. Now it's the same thing for the ground wire. We just heat that up, and once it starts to heat up, the solder just runs in that hole. It's just that sharp, easy whatever they say on the Ginsu knife commercial. And then it's just slip that on. The main thing here to see is that we're going to clamp these down together, but because both of those have been shrink wrapped, there is not going to be an issue. See that? There we go. Now we're going to feed this through. Kitty, kitty! And bring them over here. I want to show you another little trick. We're going to wrap these up and twist them around like this. I won't waste your time doing that. Okay, I have some big pieces here. And now that I've wound this up like this, I don't want these coming apart, so I will put that about right there 
And back to our friend. I, yeah, this is this is for something other than a glass pipe. You knew that, right? Please tell me you knew that. There we go. Now this will all stay together, and I can loop this around and make my connections here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is take this lug over here. We're going to pull it up nice and careful. And then we're going to push it so it makes contact with the body right there. The body of the potentiometer. Yes, we're going to bend it over. That is the ground. So, we're going to take our solder and our iron. Well, you heard that burning noise of the water and we are just going to touch this here there we go that is in contact now while we are over here we're gonna heat this up a little bit and tin that there and tin that there we're also going to come over here to this other pot and do the same thing about right there and about right there. Both of those things places are going to need to be used for grounding. Okay, now I'm going to take the hot wire, which is the white wire coming off of our input jack which is right here, and I'm going to put it on the center lug of the volume pot. And I'm going to make sure, again, that my shrink wrap is way back there. Get that sponge to make my tip nice, heat this up, heat rises, always remember that. There we go, sponge again. Let that cool off a little bit and slide up the shrink wrap. Now. Watch this tricky business. I'm going to burn punk into the ground. Yeah, not so much. Oh, look, it started on fire. Now, remember, there is a ground coming in off of the input jack. Remember that spot that we put right there? Let's heat it up a little bit. Look at that. Okay, this is where we're going to need to pay attention. This is a jumper wire. It's a short piece of wire, and we know that because it's got the white coating that we use it for hot. It means, you know, it's hot. Now we're going to take the jumper wire one end and the hot wire coming off of the pickup, and we're going to wind those together like so. Now, I'm going to want to shrink wrap this because I don't want it touching the, the yellow or center wire that goes to our input jack. So I use a bigger piece of shrink wrap and I put both of these on the lug that's left on the outside like so. Here's that sponge, and heat rises. There we go. Okay, get our little torch going on, let things cool down just a tad. Now, I can bend both of these up, like so, and this wire that's left right there that's right it's the ground wire so 
Remember that little spot of solder that I put right there? What do you know? I just heat that up. Okay, now I've got a short jumper wire. It's black, meaning it's ground. And I have my yellow wire coming in off of the trapeze tailpiece. Remember that one? Yeah, this is where everything gets grounded together. So I'm going to take these two wires and I am going to twist them together real nice and clean, like so. And I am going to, remember that third little dot right there? On the back of the potentiometer is my hand in the way. Here, that sponge. And I'm going to attach those to right there. Okay, this part is very, very tricky. It has to go from this lug on the tone capacitor all the way to the left. So, and then it has to attach to here, like this. Now, the problem with this is, is it will burn this up. The soldering iron will burn this up. So you put a sink on it meaning something that will absorb some of the heat. Okay, so I just use this alligator clip. It's not going anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this fixed on to the lug. Again, if the lug is upside down, the capacitor is upside down it's on that lug and I'm going to put that like that and get this clip on it like so and hold that like so yeah if you don't now you can use the other end to put this wherever you want clip it back into itself whatever is going to make it easy for you okay like so and then we are just going to very quickly we're going to touch the lug of the potentiometer and there we go let that sit for just a second And we're going to bend this up like so. And we can turn it now. And we can pull it over to there like that, like so. And now we're going to use both of the clips and We're going to get something to help us hold this down here. And we're going to tack that so it's grounded to back of the potentiometer. Okay, I've got a long tool here. Like so. I'm just going to hold that down. Bring in the soldering iron. Heat that up and hold it in place. There we go. Okay, guys, you'll remember that we had a jumper wire coming from the jack or the lug, excuse me, um, off of the volume pot, the one to the far right. Once again, left is ground center is a hot wire that goes to your input jack and then your wire from your pickup goes to the far right lug on the volume pot now 
that this jumper wire right here is going to go to the center lug on your tone pot. The far left one, if it's upside down, took the capacitor and the far right one is not used. So we're going to attach this jumper wire from here to the center lug. Now, if you get confused doing this, you can always hook up to your amp and use these alligator clips to kind of say, okay, is it this one here? And then I just hook it up here, like so. And I take my little screwdriver and tap on the pickup. If you're using some Gibson 57 pickup, yeah, don't be too rough with this, but we're not too worried about punking now, are we? Once again, we want to make sure that our shrink wrap is out of the way. We'll bend that up a little bit there so that helps us and get that wire in there. Bend it over just a tad. And there's the telltale steaming sound that we are hearing on the wet sponge, right? Heat rises. Bingo. Everybody cuss me. There we go. All right, last wire. All this mess over here. All this grounding stuff right here has one more wire and guess what? There's one more dot that we put on the back of the pot and that's to jump a ground from here to there. All of our pots will be grounded now and I'm gonna put that in its place. Trying to put solder on this stuff while you're doing it doesn't work out too well. So we heat that up and we hold it down. Okay, I have plugged in and turned on an amp. So let's flip pumpkin over. Oh, you gotta see the kitty. Look at the kitty. All right, here we go, volume all the way down. Nothing. I better turn that around and use the flat. Because I might scratch the paint. All the way down, nothing. There we go. And tone. Oh, there it is. Almost perfect. All right. If that wasn't completely and utterly disamazing, I don't know what was. So, it's like wiring a guitar like this is kind of like a finding an old man in the dark. It ain't hard, people. What? Anyway. Wash, wash, wash. What I don't do to keep my crowd. Listen, it is pretty easy, just step by step, run through it, make a diagram. I've got something around here somewhere that's got a, a piece of wood that's got the body cut out and it, it's, there's just basically holes in it. Is that it right there? Whoa, I swear, look at that. Check that out. It needs to be dusted off, but there are holes, so you just put a couple pieces of wood underneath this you flip it over and look it's even got the diagram of what goes where do you see that so anyway take some time write it down bookmark this episode do you know that if you want to share the episode and you fast forward i finally do one of those final explanations of this goes here and here and here you can mark it to forward it there, forward it to yourself, save it in your list, 
with that code and anytime you can look back on it because you'll forget at some point. So, looking into the future, we're going to get to the point now where we're going to put the back on pumpkin. And that might be scary. Like this kitty. Anyway, I'm going to show you something that you have probably never seen before. We've made a tool. It's got a tuner, a couple pieces of wood, a 90 degree angle with a hole in the right place. And we are going to use an eye screw and leverage. And I'm going to show you a pretty cool trick with these empty holes that are back here. And we're going to winch this thing back together so the action is awesome because I really, really need to get this to the person it's going to. Okay. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I make these so people that pick up these harmonies and K's can figure out what to do with them. I'm going to cover a little bit about something I heard another Luthier talking about, about how you gain these skills that some of you watch my channel for uh, on some, some of these less expensive guitars. And I talked about what the market on some of these is starting to look like in 2024. I did a uh, I think I called a cliche uh, New Year video. Check that one out and get to the point where I start talking about the economics of guitars, how the new guitar and thus the immediately used guitar and the higher end stuff is starting to do this because the dealers uh, are kind of getting messed up by some of their own brands that they're representing. Anyway, um, again, not hard. Pretty easy to do. Take some notes and give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you in episode 11 of Punkin'.